What is up, people of the internet? It is Dave. It is Duncan. Back from Metal Academy. Shut your talk. <laughs> well. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Someone's on holiday mode this evening. I'm 100% holiday mode. <laughs> Do you like pina coladas? <laughs> no, so I've got a rum and coke. <laughs> nice, I like it. i join you with a little beer. A little Ooh. three star beer. A th three star? What's wrong with three. the five star? Three star. As three. In, give it away for free. Three star. All free. right. You got it for free. <laughs> got it for free. Um, oh, that's excellent. Welcome once again to another album review. Um, for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new album from Louisiana hardcore band Capra. The band's new album Errors will be released on October 6th via Metal Blade Records. Correction there is Louisiana. <laughs> Oh, swag in that. <laughs> you have to. Let's how they yeah. say it. All right. Louisiana. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I've morally and mortally offended them right now, <laughs> and they won't get beyond this to hear what we think of the album. But if they are by chance scrolling by, that's as close as a Scotsman's going to be able to pronounce authentically the name of where you're from. Authentically. Spare um, no expense, Dave. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so, album number two from Capra, which follows up 2821's In Transmission, which we reviewed and enjoyed for the record. We did enjoy it quite a bit. For this one, the band said, we wanted to create something authentic, something real and honest, nothing more and nothing less, says vocalist Crow Lotus. Uh, guitarist Tyler Harper says, I knew that we knew I wanted to pick up where the first album left off, but they needed to have an entirely new attitude. If you listen to the last song from In Transmission, into the first song on Errors, it's a continuation. From there, the album steers off into a direction that still feels similar, but is new. Uh, tracking in Estuary Recording Studios in Austin, Texas with Andrew Hernandez, the album was mixed by Taylor Young, say, and mastered by Brad Boatwright. <laughs> we love you, Brad. Yeah. Uh, the latter two also having worked on in transmission. For collaborations, Capra recruited Walls of Jericho vocalist Candice, I'm not going to try and pronounce her surname, uh, to add her <laughs> inimitable tones to Human Commodity, while their friend Dustin Kaufman from Glassing added backing vocals to a handful of tracks. Producer Hernandez also added some piano to Nora, which closes out the album. Okay, Duncan. Capra errors. Um, yeah, I... I don't know about you. I don't. I, I don't know about you, but, but I'm so glad to bring it up here on our recording. What would you like to know? That's what we discussed about you, Duncan. Um, I believe this album grabbed me right from the off, probably more than In Transmission did. Yeah. This, um, I, can I just can I just steal your thunder a little bit here? I don't know about you, Duncan. I don't know about you. <laughs> but okay. I don't think I've ever heard a band open an album mm. with essentially how a band would open a set. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, a live set? Yeah. It's like, like, the cymbals are gone, you're getting ready, and that's your fucking getting ready, just kick in mm. straight away. And it yeah. felt like, as soon as they did that, I was like, like what are we doing? Is that a live track? What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that, and now I think every band should like fuck this like samples and electronic sounds yeah. and a okay. fucking transformer falling down the stairs. Fuck that, just <laughs> fucking cymbals, and then one, two, three, four, in the face. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I yeah. felt like within transmission, I needed like a couple of listens just to kind of get a feel for it and just to kind yeah. of get into it. This one, I was like track one. I was like, oh right, okay, I'm in. I'm, I'm ready to go. Here we <laughs> go. Um, and this one, like, it felt, it feels even more, uh, even more kind of hook laden musically than uh, than the previous yep. album. Um, but although this like still sounds like Capra we, that we heard on in transmission, um, it's, it, it does feel a little different, um, especially in, in the songwriting of the album. Especially, far more focused this album, um, far more calculated, um, and it feels like they've kind of just trimmed the fat from you know what the, the kind of sound was before. Um, and because of that, I, I feel this album also comes across way more confident than the previous album. This um, this feels like it does feel like a follow up. Feels like a second album. It has that kind of like that kind of swagger of 
we know you know what worked on the last album and mm. we know what we need to improve on and I felt like that came across massively on this album that the confidence was just kind of dripping from it from that first track um, you can hear it in the play and you can hear it in how, t- how tight the band sound um, on the album as well I mean they um, tout how tight they are it's... well it does yeah it's definitely tight um, <laughs> which um, also kind of makes this album less slightly less chaotic than in transmission in a way yeah yeah um because it's a little bit more methodical um but it doesn't lose any of that like uh kind of visceral energy energy they had previously um they've made sure each section is perfectly timed not to kind of overrun or become repetitive um but also play it enough times that it kind of gets in your head um, and the tr- transitions are are very seamless into the kind of various like detours they take on each track um, and I feel like each track does give you like a little something different you know they, they'll change up the pace quite regularly and um, the rhythm the tone as well and um, once again though know, they slot in those big old filthy fucking grooves um, even more so um, on this album um, and we mentioned it on In Transmission there is a, a slight resemblance to another band that we possibly mentioned in the last review and it's it's here again um that band is every time i die obviously yeah i'm glad um, that you like i know we, we like people to go back but that's deep in the archives to find yeah. that fucking review you're spending that's hours fair. on the internet and you're getting lost <laughs> several times so yeah that's every fair. time i die yeah, specifically is... every time i die circa early. first two albums yeah yeah early every time i die for sure um, and that, like those kind of slower parts, um, for me were just like completely engaging, um, just and really satisfying as well when they launch into that kind of style groove. Um, if you check out the ends of like Tied Up, uh, Solana, or Loser, um, oh, for reference, yeah. like the ends of those tracks are are absolutely killer. Um, and kind of kind of similar to what you were saying just earlier there, that is going to translate into the the live setting absolutely perfectly. That is going oh, to yeah. sound awesome live you're um, gonna have people fucking breaking shit like yeah. like see when those like see when the guitar just comes out you can feel it coming up and then there's that slot and then you're like you're gonna get that yeah. and it's done it's done so well on this album like yeah. it's to the point where you're like you know what this track needs and they're like got it <laughs> you know, you do, actually you do have that yeah. that's that are ahead of the pack. Um, yeah, so yeah, I feel like those part. To be honest, this album is going to translate to the to the live setting perfectly. Um, tracks like uh, like Trauma Bond, which have that like kind of slower tempo and parts to really allow you to sink into that kind of head banging groove, but it's also littered with these little bursts of like furious punk pace that'll that'll you know get that circle pit moving as well. Um, there's also some quite clever melodic work in the guitars on this album mm. as well, on the likes of Loser. Um, which again does have that kind of every time I die streak, but it all makes for a, a much more varied listen on this album, um, which I think this album has much more of um, than In Transmission did. Um, even in the way the they start the tracks, it's, it's a bit more interesting as well. If you listen to In Transmission, a lot of it, you know, just like they go straight in, they just kick mm-hmm. in and everything, you know, everyone goes hell for leather. Um, on Errors, again, as I said, it feels more planned out um, with the likes of Trauma, Bo- Trauma Bond, uh, being more like kind of start stoppy or like Kingslayer um, and obligatory existence, giving you like a bit of a build up with you know tom work and, and ringing guitars and stuff as well. Um, the, the only thing that I feel like maybe didn't make a huge difference for me was the the kind of guest vocalists. Um, I mentioned mm-hmm. earlier they've got um, Candice on there from uh, Walls of Jericho um, on uh, Human Commodity. Um, it's a good track. It's not my favourite track on the album. Um, I just feel like when I was listening to it, as, as good as Candice is, I feel like they could have picked a vocalist that had a more contrasting tone to, to Crow Lotus's yeah, tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can hear Candice on the track, but I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more daring in, in that respect. Um, but it was just a small a small thing that kind of that, that kind of caught my ear. Um, I also really liked uh, the ending of Obligatory Existence um, with that, like, Kind of like tremolo picked kind of black metal type guitar guitar chord that sits beneath the kind of main riff i thought that was really cool it added this um kind of also well, kind of malevolent kind of streak to the track and um, which was really cool um and it's it's not the first time we've heard the band you know play with those types of influences but um you did something similar on i think it was a closing track on in transmission using some more kind of melodic blackened chords 
Um, the album Closer on Errors, however, uh, Nora, definitely an interesting one. Um, mm-hmm. It's the kind of the one that sticks out, the kind of oddity on Errors, but in a in a in a cool way. Um, it's even more. Um, it's even cleaner. It's it's more haunting than anything they've done in the past. Um, there's a lot more ambience to it. Um, some tasteful piano, as I mentioned earlier, um, and a bit more of a, a reserved kind of delivery from uh, Crow Lotus, which was quite nice to hear. Um, and it kind of leaves you with that like intrigue of how will that then affect the next album going forward? Knowing well, that we have... now know as musicians are thinking about that, which yeah. I kind of love. Yeah. They, yeah, it's kind of like we, we had that in our pocket the whole time, mm. but we're just going to throw it in the last track and it leaves you thinking, right, what's what's happening next? Um, yeah, uh, I, th- I think the production was really well done on Errors as well. It's, it sounds more compact. Um, the drum tones are a bit punchier this time around. Um, I, I didn't, when I went back and I listened to In Transmission, I didn't really notice it as much when we were reviewing it, but when I listened back to it, I was like, oh, the snare on that. Actually, not too keen on the snare sound on that. It's very that raw though. sounding. Yeah. You know what I mean, which I mean, kind of suits the music to an extent. But mm. you can put a bit of polish on something and still retain a savagery, which I yep. kind of thinks maybe not not necessarily there. Also, it did feel like that first release did kind of feel like we were getting it straight from the the fucking tip. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it did feel very much unfiltered. Yeah, for um, sure. And they've yeah. got the right people in on this one just to, to elevate yeah. without it, losing anything, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, for sure. It feels um, much fuller sounding here. Um, guitars sound fucking ripping as well. Um, yeah. the production very much kind of mirrors the, the leaner performance we're getting here from Capra on this album. I did, I did enjoy the sound of this one. Um, there's not really anything done poorly, to be honest. Um, if anything, I'd like to hear them take a few more risks, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, they can clearly do it. Um, they've got more in the tank, and I think they could have added a touch more of that kind of uniqueness throughout the album. Um, there are similarities to other bands um, that you'll, you'll hear straight away. Some are more obvious than others, but I feel like if they pushed a little more in those areas um, that they experiment with, um, we'll get an album that's even more kind of distinctive sounding. Um, that aside, I think this is a, it's a great example of hardcore punk done really well with your know, attitude and ferocity. Um, but by a band that have clearly matured in their songwriting since the last mm-hmm. release um, and put it to good use on errors. Um, definitely more focused, more confident, not only musically, but in the, the vocal performance from Crow Lotus as well, who sounds you know, very honest, but absolutely fierce as well on the album. Um, what about yourself? What do you think of Errors? Yeah, I was, I was a big fan of their previous release and... The, the, I mean, we, we mentioned it, we've mentioned it again. I'm going to mention it again. Um, I love Every Time I Die. I, I genuinely I do. I and I think they were a band that continually never really sat in a comfort zone, which in a lot of respects is why I loved them, but it did make me at times opine for a simpler time when that Hot Damn album came out and I spun that to fucking death. Mm. nothing sounded like it and it was just it was chaos but it was catchy as fuck right Mm. and I felt Capra started to show influences and signs of that sound on the previous release Mm. I think they've taken the best elements of that forward onto errors Yeah, I think whilst it resembles it doesn't fully copy this time Mm-hmm. I think a lot of that has to do with the pacing. They very rarely hit that fucking full on every time I die pace. Yeah. It comes in little bits here, but this one's much more measured, much more focused, and mm-hmm. I actually think a lot better for that. I think um the the, the kind of lack of just general chaos theory on this mm-hmm. um does it good. I think the it's a riffy bitch. Like yeah. this is like packed with fucking awesome well written riffs mm. which belie a lot of melody and a lot of groove and like when when those sweet spots are hit almost in every single track it's hard not to smile when you're listening to it mm. I think vocally I think Crow's vocals are fucking awesome I love her tone mm. it's a voice that always sounds like it's on the cusp of breaking but never quite yeah um once again, it's 
reminds me of another vocalist um, who then went off and did vocal lessons and vo- his voice sounded better, but he, he could never really deliver those original songs in that tone because he'd, he'd polished his technique. Mm. I don't think this is a vocalist who's lacking technique, I just actually think their voice is more within that range and can command more. Yeah. It, it feels very much from the heart as well. I like I, I yeah. don't know all the vocals, but I could make it quite a lot of it. And the, the lyrics felt very, very, very personal. Like mm. they, they were like painting a picture, and I, lo- I love those elements. But it's hard to deny Capra's prominence when you're listening to tracks like Solana, which in itself reminds you of all the best things of Early Every Time I Die, but also the snarly, angry, punky side, which is very much of the band. Mm. Um, and the, the, the album is just littered with these highlights that just really make you kind of stand back and and just marvel at how raw and how vicious, but how measured it is. Like, it, it feels like the band are constantly just, just holding back from absolute anarchy mm. in the best possible way because we mentioned it in a live set and I think they can just go over that line yeah. anytime they want. Yeah. And that's that's kind of awesome. It's littered with great tracks. You've already mentioned a ton of them. I'm I'm with you on this one. The get the guest appearances are a bit perplexing for me. Mm. Um, not because even they sound all that alike. I just don't think it's required. Yeah, I think the album isn't particularly long. It has its own identity. So like guest vocalists kind of confuse me a little bit unless you are going very much against the grain. Yeah. Which they could have done here. Listen, I'm all for, we've got a friend and another band who plays in a similar genre. We're going to bring them in that sounds kind of similar. Down to clown on that one. And to be honest with you, I can't imagine anyone that has been a long-term fan of Walls of Jericho isn't going to pick up a Capra album the first time, shove it on and not enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I like that kind of almost cross market inside the things where maybe they can get some of their fans over and check out their stuff mm. um, closing track Norris where things got really exciting for me Yeah. Um, I feel you missed a, a word which was instantly on the top of my tongue when I heard this and it's Deftones, uh, the guitar tone is Deftones and I fucking love it, the chords are also Deftones <laughs> um, even the way they utilise the piano and the synths on it are very deft tones, but the track doesn't sound like the deft tones. Mm. And I was getting all giddy because I was like, this is mood and it's atmosphere and it's dark and it's ominous and weirdly uplifting. And it, it packages them all in. Her kind of more spoken aggressive tone vocally is something they should do more of for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think it adds a lot of contrast. It might add a lot of more contrast because we've went through nine songs of our fucking <laughs> hell for leather and then that hits in and it sounds very different. If she utilises it on every track, maybe it's not going to have that, but there was something that just meshed up with everything that I thought was a very, 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 very good album closer. Mm. One that kind of left an impression. The amount yeah. of albums I've listened to this year where the closing track has been like, oh, cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And this one, I was like, right, you've left me with something that I'm genuinely curious about. Mm. I'll also say the album artwork's a bit of an interesting one. (laughs) Um, It's kind of like a sadistic early Duran Duran um, (laughs) art. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I like it or if Mm. I dislike it. Um, It does have a kind of lo-fi approach to it that does kind of feel like what a band would put on their demo. Mm. That being said, though, there are no airs and graces in this band, and maybe that's the impact of the album artwork. Yeah. Very simplistic, very to the point, paints a very stark picture, and then you switch on, and the album kind of just lives up to that right from the start. Mm. I think Capra are really, really, really interesting. I, I like, I was always going to be curious to see what album 2 sounded like and it's growth and it's growth in the right direction for me so they are definitely one to watch I I can only see this band get bigger and bigger Mm. and I can actually on the, the, the listener of that last track I can hear a side of this band that would get them a bigger crowd yeah, uh, for sure if they chose to lean into it and you know what if they only ever saved it to the closing song in every album I'd be fine with that as well. 
So yeah, this is this is really fucking good. Mm. It's great to hear them back so soon. I mean, yeah, yeah. In, like only two years and a brand new band, and they're they're doing all all the things right. The biggest criticism is it isn't the most original thing I've heard in the world. But at the same time, it's not generic <laughs> like yeah. at all. You know what I mean? It's not paint by numbers hardcore punk. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like the Capra are a band that I've got like on day one when they release an album, I will check out. They have me in with the bricks. Yeah, for sure. Um, so ratings for errors by Capra. Um, yeah, I agree. I think um, this is a really, really strong release. Um, it shows the band uh, growing. They've got more confidence, um, and it's another really kind of ferocious album from the band. Um, I love those little kind of halftime grooves and stuff that they throw in. That that really kind of grabs my attention. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I've I've heard similar stuff. There are other bands that do this as well. Um, it's that it was that last track that kind of got me thinking. Like, hmm. I think I'd like to hear this band experiment a bit more um, yeah. out with the last track. I, I think I think they could do more throughout the album with little bits of experimentation and mm-hmm. um, bits of that melody as well. So I'd like to hear them push that a bit more. Uh, for me on this one, um, I'd probably go four out of five. Uh, what about yourself? What are you thinking? I'm coming in with you. I think yeah. this is a super solid four. I think um, it gives room... They're, like they're they're very exciting because they could do a lot of different things. Yeah. And I don't want to be celebrating the next release before this release gets its day. <laughs> um, I would love to see them live. Oh yeah. I'm just saying, if they want to tour. I would love <laughs> to see these live in Scotland. And I'm just throwing King Tuts out there. Um, <laughs> that venue, this band. Oh. Well, we know which band loves King Tuts. We've seen them in King Tuts many a time. Yes, yeah. Every time I die, play King yeah. Tuts. Also, a lot. we we once many moons ago opened for Walls of Jericho in King Tuts. So. Wait, yes, we did. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> Flash flashback yeah, when I was talking to said singer off stage, and yeah. she paid me a compliment by saying you guys sounded really good, and I was like thanks very much, and I I'm almost a hundred percent sure she wasn't in the venue where I played, so she didn't have to do that. <laughs> So we'll take we'll take that as a thanks oh, very yeah. much. I forgot all yeah. about that. See, um, I never forget anything, Dave, yeah. except my name. <laughs> uh, so, um, Capra Errors um, out on October sixth on Metal Blade Records and also Blacklight Media Records. Um, links below to the band. Pre-order. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Happy to hear your thoughts on it. That is the review. Thank you for checking it out. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone. No! No!